Well, the latest in prophecy is that Jerry Kushner took a jet ride from uh, Israel to the United Arab Emirates and also went through uh, Saudi Arabia airspace in order to make the trip. Um, and when he got there, he said that he expects all 22 Arab states to recognize Israel in the very near future. Now, of course, he said in his uh, report that uh, he expects this to happen in months, but of course, that may very well be optimistic. But, I, you know, the Bible does say that there would be a peace with many, so that's something that you have to to look at, you know, the one thing that needs to be pointed out is that if the Bible predicted that in the last days that Israel would become a nation again, this, this is a, an impossible feat that has never been duplicated by any nation. Now, in other words, no nation has ever come back from the dead. And that's basically what happened with Israel. They lost possession of their land 2,000 years ago and regained their land back in 1948. And they became a nation, as the Bible said, in one day. And you know, scripture also indicates that when they became a when they become a nation again, that they would also regain Jerusalem. Well, again, when they took uh, Israel and turned it into a nation again, uh, they did not have all of uh, Jerusalem. But 19 years later, they took Jerusalem back when uh, Jordan decided to attack them. So frankly, the, the Israelis weren't even looking to possess Jerusalem. It was because of the irresponsible decision of the Jordanian uh, military to enter into this uh, 67 war that ultimately allowed Israel to regain Jerusalem. But getting back to what I was talking about, this right here. Now that Israel's back in their own land, they, they have Jerusalem. The Bible says in Zechariah 12, 3, that Jerusalem at some point in time would become a burdensome stone. And all nations that decided to... Uh, bother with this uh, burdensome stone would eventually be ripped to shreds. Of course, Jerusalem has been a burdensome stone uh, to the world for many, many years, but I think it's going to get a lot worse as we draw close to the rapture of the church and uh, to the start of the tribulation period. And you know, while most of the world uh, of Bible prophecy is looking at this virus as uh, a very possible mark of the Antichrist, they're not really focusing what the Bible says you should really be focusing on. There is no virus in the Bible other than the fact that Matthew 24 does state that one of the signs that will lead up to the rapture of the church and the start of the tribulation period. I should have said to say the rapture or the uh, start of the tribulation period. There are signs that will precede the tri the uh, tribulation period. And of course, one of them uh, is pestilence and another is famine. And here's an article that talks specifically about that as a byproduct of this uh, pandemic that we're going through and this worldwide virus that is plaguing us. And the title of the uh, uh, article is A Tenth of the World Could Go Hungry While Crops Rot in the Fields. And this is what it says. It says that the world is hurtling toward an unprecedented hunger crisis. As many as 132 million people that previously projected could go hungry in 2020 and this year's uh, gain may be more than triple any increase this, uh, this century. The pandemic is upending food supply chains, crippling economies, and eroding consumer purchasing power. Some projections show that by the end of the year, COVID-19 will cause more people to die each day from hunger than from virus infection, which well, I believe that completely. Now, what makes this situation unmatched? The uh, massive spike is happening at a time of enormous global food surpluses. And it's happening in every part of the world, with new levels of food insecurity forecast for countries that used to uh, have relatively stable, uh, relative stability. Now the article goes on to say that we'll see the scars of this crisis for generations, said Mariana Chilton, director of the Center for Hunger-Free Communities at Drexel University. In 2020, uh, we'll still be talking about this crisis. Now, here's a statistic that uh, kind of gives you an idea. It says that by the end of end of the year, as many as 12,000 people could die a day from hunger linked to COVID-19, potentially more than those perishing from the virus itself. COVID-19 has exposed some of the world's deepest inequalities. It's also a determining force in who gets to eat and who doesn't. Uh, underscoring global social divides as the richest keep enjoying a break, breakneck pace of wealth accumulation. 
on top of all the economic malaise, the uh, lockdowns and broken supply chains have also created a serious problem for food distribution. And you know, there's something you you don't want to forget about as well, that uh, earlier in the summer, the uh, locust swarms ravaged much of Africa and moved on to the Middle East and ended up in uh, uh, the Far East Asian uh, countries. And you know, who knows what uh, lies ahead for next year. So you should be looking at this and uh, looking at the signs that uh, the Bible says will pro- will uh, precede the uh, start of the tribulation period as another indicator as to the day we're living in. And you know, again, I always like to mention this in my last video, which is something you need to go back and look at. You can see the gathering of the nations are in and around Israel. And right now, the reason why they're gathering in and around Israel is because of a fight in the uh, Mediterranean Sea over an oil fine that has caused uh, the, the likes of Turkey, Russia, and other nations to make uh, inroads into Lebanon. And don't be surprised if uh, both uh, Turkey and Russia start amassing uh, military personnel and also equipment in those two cities in the name of keeping Hezbollah and Iran under control as this peace that is going on in the Middle East starts to form. But as I said in my last article that, uh, or should I say video, nations are starting to form alliances and uh, wars and rumors of war are taking place in that general area. And again, that is a sign of the end times and the start of the tribulation period. Well, let's go back and let's take a look at the gateway to the tribulation period, which is a seven-year peace accord that Israel will have with many. Of course, this uh, peace accord with the United Arab Emirates, the plane ride over Saudi Arabia, and uh, from Israel to the UAE was a major step that I believe that others are going to jump on. You know, like I said, the the Bible has been right about everything else. Why not this as well? So I fully expect this peace accord to take place. I don't think there's going to be any more dry runs. And of course, this uh, peace accord has caused the Iranian leader to uh, burst a blood vessel in his forehead. So he's absolutely not happy about it. But uh, I believe you can expect others to jump on board because of the fact that they know this alliance with Israel is going to work. And speaking of peace, the uh, Kushner also addressed the Palestinian situation. Here's an article. Uh, Also, it says, Kushner, Palestinians will get peace as soon as they are ready. In other words, he's he's not at all pushing peace for the Palestinians unless they want it. He's more than happy to move on without the Palestinians. But of course, the Palestinians have a financial stake in their not being peace because the minute they have peace millions and millions of dollars of free money from around the world will, uh, well, they believe will dry up. So in their view, it's certainly not an advantage for them to come to the peace table and to, to, to have peace. And, you know, I hope that President Trump is looking into this or whoever will lead this peace uh, proposal and, and try to get some of these nations who have been given free money away to the Palestinians all these years, that they, they will ultimately decide to dry this money up and force the Palestinians to come back to the negotiating table and ultimately to bring peace to that area. And here's another article I want to talk about before I move forward with the other articles, and that is that the U.S. has uh, announced that they are having a, they are lifting a partial arms embargo on Cyprus after 33 years. And that's a big, big deal because uh, this is one of the areas, as I said, in the Mediterranean, that Turkey has become a very volatile and threatening adversary to that area. And the United States sees that and uh, is now allowing Cyprus a fighting chance against Turkey by lifting this embargo. So again, this is just another sign of the times where nations are rising up against nations and uh, there are signs of wars and rumors of wars. So it seems that God is putting all the players into their place and readying for a peace and then sudden destruction to take place, uh, which basically is the order in which uh, will take place in the tribulation period once it starts, where there will be peace that will come upon the world for a short time. And then in the second seal, the peace will be taken from the world. And in Daniel 8, 23 through 25, it says that the Antichrist during his reign would uh, destroy many through peace. In other words, in order to keep the peace, he will have to kill a lot of people. 
But before anything of that can happen, the Bible says there must be this peace with many, found in uh, Daniel 9, 27. That must take place, and as I said, we are on the cusp of that taking place. So I will continue to keep you up to date on what's going on in the world of Bible prophecy, and we will try our best to keep it conspiracy theory free, stick with what the Bible has to say, and uh, I would advise you to do that, do the same thing. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day for you to get saved. Frankly, your time is running out, and I believe the uh, rapture is about to take place. But if you don't know the Lord, you won't be taken. But on top of that, if you don't know the Lord and you were to die today, you're going to end up in a burning hell. You don't want that to happen. So I would encourage you to make your peace with God. Believe that his son died for the sins of the world. Your sins in particular. Repent, believe, and live for him from this day forward. And you that are Christians, you need a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. Get it in the hands of every lost friend and loved one. They're going to need this book when the rapture takes place and the start of the Tribulation Period begins. You certainly don't want the world telling your lost friend or loved one how they need to react once the tribulation period begins. So go down to the description section, get this book, get it in their hands, and you'll be happy that you did that. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.